Your God's already spoken to hearts in this place. And you know, when we get together in such fashion, I believe God wants to touch lives and hearts. For two and three to God, though am I in the midst. God is here. He's here for you. Hallelujah. And I was so blessed by the, the word of the Lord came through Sam and Brother William and even Pastor David because it confirmed what the Lord had laid on my heart. You know, that's, it's a joy when that happens because, you, you know, you, you want to know what the Lord has to say, not what you have to say. But what God has to say to his people. And it's so important in this day and age, I believe, to know the heart and mind of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. I'm just going to reread the reverse of Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6. See, Paul had a problem in the Galatian church. Because there was one, there was what is called Judaizers. They were Jewish, Jews that had accepted Christ into their life. But they were saying, it's Jesus plus. You know, it's not enough to know him as Savior, but you have to be circumcised. You know, in other words, they were adding to the gospel that they had heard. And Paul comes, and Paul brings revelation, you know, at the gospel that they were bringing was not the gospel of Christ, because Jesus only is our message. Amen. It's not Jesus plus, you know. It's a present high people like the odd things on, you know. But at the end of the day, it's Jesus plus. Praise is wonderful. Uh, it's Jesus on his own, should say. <laughs> Bless the Lord. I read this wee verse out, Galatians 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory to in the cross of, a, of Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and unto the world. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Praise him. See, Paul was pointing to the fact that the world has been crucified in Christ. You know? And that Christ paid the ultimate price. And the world did not have dominion. Sin did not have dominion. The devil did not have dominion over his life. Amen? It was the Lord Jesus Christ. And him only. Hallelujah. And Paul said that he didn't need the approval of men. We love to be approved. You know? I mean, we had politicians at this time. You know, they love to be approved. It's all image, not substance. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, it's like the old saying says, it's only skin deep. You know, Paul said, I didn't seek the approval of men because I don't want to boast in anything but the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, Paul had every reason to boast. I mean, Paul was a preacher of preachers. He was a highly educated man. You know, if it wasn't for Paul, we wouldn't have most of the New Testament today because he had great insight and foresight. He knew in whom he believed. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. The title for my message is The Forgotten Christ on the Cross. The forgotten Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2 verse 2 says, For I determined not to know anything among you save of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God Almighty. Hallelujah. And you know, my desire for the Anthem Church, the Anthem Apostolic Church is, 
God forbid at the end of the Mabbas story, so I glory in anything else but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Amen. We'll glory in anything else. Hallelujah. Praise His wonderful name. And you know, when Paul, as I said, was writing those words, he was debating the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. See, Paul gloried in that. He had a revelation of Jesus. And you know, when you have a revelation of, of, of Christ, your life is never the same again. You know, I wonder if people say they get, they get a vision of Jesus, but I see very little change in their life and experience. If you get a revelation of a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, friends, I'm telling you, your life will be transformed. Your perspective on life won't be earthly, it will be heavenly. Hallelujah. You will be lifted above your circumstances and situations and taken to a place where you know the grace of God is sufficient. Hallelujah. Praise his name. And you know, I think Paul was put back to that encounter along the Damascus Road. You know, I love that we say in Damascus, Damascus. <laughs> you know, the Damascus Road. But God took us, stripped us away. He exposed Paul for whom he was. And you know, Jesus said to him, Paul, Saul, Saul, sorry, why do you persecute me? And Paul said, who are you? He said, I am Christ. The one who we persecute. Hallelujah. And you know, praise the Lord, give them news. You know, the, per the persecutor of hate became the proclaimer of life. Hallelujah. God changed and transformed Paul in an instant as he had that encounter with Jesus. Friends, when you get an encounter with Jesus, believe you me, your life is never the same again. Praise his wonderful name. And you know, Paul always pointed to Jesus. You know, he always pointed people to Christ. Uh, you know, like John the Baptist said, I must uh, you decrease that he must what? Increase. And that should be us in life. That should be us in our work. As, as we decrease, he increases, you know. Me, you know, people say, you talk about being filled with the Spirit, you know. Well, you know, I believe being filled with God's Spirit, not so much, you know, we get more of him, but he gets more of us. We must decrease. He must increase. Praise his wonderful name. And you know, recently, I found myself going through such battles in my personal life, you know, and thinking such things as, I, I question what's to do with God. Have you ever done that? You know, you question how, you know, sometimes the circumstances and the pressures are so great, you know, and you're torn apart and say, and you're questioning, you're saying, where are you, God? You know, as we heard this morning, why? Don't want that's why the Lord will shoot them, you know. And I began to wonder how deep, you know, it's, it's a good thing to self examine yourself, isn't it? You know. We've done it around the table this morning. Have a man examined himself. Do I be wondering how deep was my commitment? And how passionate was I in my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? And as my mind wanders, I began to think, am I warm? Am I cold? And I was like a lot of in church, am I lukewarm? You know? And you know, I thought back to happier times, times of victory. Times of rejoicing. You always look back to those times, don't you? You know, and it's not such a bad thing. But my, you know, when I look back to those times of rejoicing, my heart was burned with a desire to seek the things of God on the service lay. It was a time of joy. It was a time of longing, not just to know more of God, but to serve Him. Those were days gone by. You know, it was heaven and earth. It really was a sense of a divine presence with me. Praise his name. But you know, as the years went on, my heart seemed less joyful. My mind filled with all things, the curse of the world, the sickness of my body. I had no vision, just a dim, a glimpse from time to time. But nothing affirmed my soul and stirred portion of heart. Nothing had lifted my spirit. You know, I could feel all this what I was going through with my religious outward things. I knew all the right things. You know, the Pentecostal dance. 
You know, how to lift you. You will fool people, but you can't fool God. Amen. But then I was crying and dying, just like a spectator. You know, you can be a spectator, not a participator. You know, because you're, you're going through something, friends. It's the most lonely place. And you know, it used to bug me and these people come in with all joy. And I was going through, you know, you know going through and saying, why? You know, what if I got to be joyful about it? I'm going through this, you know. And you go, you get so self conceited, you know, about who you are and what you're going through, you know. And then I, I, in that situation, the Lord spoke. Amen. Isn't that lovely? The Lord spoke. And it seemed to bring hope and strength. And God poured into the desperation of my soul. And I heard a voice, come to the cross. Come to the cross. Hallelujah. Maybe friends online, God saying to you, come to the cross. Come to the cross. I realized in that moment a sense of assurance, not abandonment. I knew if it was a place I could give victory, it was at the cross. I began to realize I, I had not lost, not just lost the assurance of salvation of the cross, but the wonder and the majesty of the Christ on the cross. Wonder and the majesty. Hallelujah. I lost sight of what really mattered and what should have been central to my Christian life and work. The cross! As the cross was center, but them two crosses say, by say, Christ should be at the center of our life and our work. Amen. There's only one thing that counts above all, above every dominion, every kingdom, and that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. Praise His wonderful name. And you know the words of John came to me. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Let's behold the Lamb this morning. And I, I thought, I love old hymns. Bit of tradition is that way. But I thought about that old hymn. At the cross of the cross. Where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight, and there I was happy all the time. Little, little friends, he can take your burden away. Amen. He can take your burden away. And God began to speak to my spirit again. And God says, as he poured in his peace and strength, God says, there are many in the church just like you. Come for it. They have wandered from the cross. Peter said, Peter, they, they were far off, you know. You know, Judas was so close, too close to Christ, but yet so far away. You yeah. know, and if you study Matthew 10, where Jesus gave him authority to go out and minister, Judas is one of them. He ministers. You know, you can still minister and yet be far away from Christ. Did you know that? Yeah. You know, that's why the title of my message says, the forgotten Christ on the cross. But you know, when we go around the Lord's table, do this and what? Remembrance. We should never forget. We should never forget. You know, a lot of people recognize the symbol of a cross. Don't they? You see them wearing necklaces for the cross, or even singers, music singers, musicians. I don't even see it at movies, you know? Of the cross, but I few recognize the Christ on the cross. Very few recognize the Christ on the cross. Even in many churches today, friends, when we look at our nation, the true gospel is not being preached. You know? When's the last time you heard about someone coming to the altar weeping in the patterns of conviction? You know? Over a message about the cross and the Christ on the cross. When the last time, you know, and that. You hear more, you know, in a lot of churches today, you hear more of a seeker-friendly message, a feel-good factor, a watered-down sermon. You know, like Timothy said, they will listen to what the rest of you want to hear and turn aside from the truth. You know, it'd be a man's gospel and not a saint. 
our Christ-centered gospel. You know? They will declare, I want all, instead of I surrender all. You know? If Jesus preached about it, he'd be a good teacher, he'd be a miracle worker, he'd be a source of inspiration for you to become a better person, to get rich, healthy, or wealthy. You know, God does, like I've said before, God doesn't bring us to your cross, Spencer. He brings us to your cross. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and some churches today, and I believe this is a warning, are embracing a Christless culture. A Christless culture. Because they want to be inclusive to the world and want to be more relevant. It's to promise over the expense of truth. Yeah, compromise. A watered down gospel, it doesn't cost anything. But to close the God Almighty, we want everything. You know? It seeks the blessings of God, you know? But doesn't want to seek the blesser, you know? They are in the social programs that even embrace New Year's teaching. You know? And here's a wee illustration. I just want to, I love my wee illustrations. There's a wee man and his son, and they were walking for a strawberry patch, lots of strawberries. And he took some strawberries, took one, took a handful. And he gave one to his wee son, right? Now this strawberry tasted good, as strawberries do. It was beautiful, it was perfect, and it was sweet. And then something happened to the rest of the strawberries in the strawberry patch. The strawberries that were left in the strawberry patch, they were taken up, you know? And they were taken in, and they were chopped up, you know, and they were used for our foods like cereals. Yes, strawberries and cereals. <coughs> but evidently, the strawberries are made into a strawberry preserve, right? And what, you know that makes them into jam. You ever had strawberry jam? You know? And the rest of the strawberries that was left of the strawberry pots got messed up. They were messed up and processed and were put in the foods like pop tarts. You ever heard of pop tarts? They're putting the pop tarts. And then last but not least, the strawberries that were there were put in the, the, the laboratory. Right? Where the essence of a strawberry is taken out of the real strawberry. That essence is used for drinks, like fruit drinks, or you ever had a strawberry slush? One of them, you know. You see, dads don't take their kids to strawberry patches anymore. They give them strawberry slush or strawberry juice. It doesn't actually have a real strawberry in them. It's a combination of chemicals and cows and sugars manufactured by man. The kids love the strawberry slushes. That has no real strawberries in them. And they get used to it. So much so, that when the same kid was walking through a real strawberry patch one day, he picked up an, an actual strawberry and he ate it, only to find out he didn't taste it. He loved the strawberry south much better. So he did. That's what man's done to the gospel. They've done, done the gospel on the cross. When they preach, it's not a real gospel. It's watered down. They got strawberry. It's not the real thing. It's something that's manufactured by man, for man, not to glorify Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They take away the fundamentals, you know, and they replace it by humanistic doctrines and things that elevate man and not glorify God, you know. And you know, it may be pleasing to the eye, but it's not real. Like Timothy said, it's just a form of godliness. You know, but denying the power the law. They no longer recognize, acknowledge, embrace a crucified Christ and what God teaches about him in his word. In fact, many in the church are going against and made their mission to undermine and reject the Savior. You know, not a seer says that. Behold, I stand the door and knock. Christ was not going to get in. He was not going to get in. Because he was pushed out, you know, in that respect. And that's not the uh, unsafe, that's the church. See, we need to wake up. 
Because they want to do away with the cross. They want to do away with the finished work of Jesus Christ. We must never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul, he lived to believe that. I am not ashamed, he said, of the gospel of Christ. For me to live with Christ and to die is gain. You know? And we want to make it our mission as a church to preach the true gospel. You know? You know, Paul could have watered it down to soften the blow. You know, he could have made it more appealing, you know, by his preaching. He, you know, he could have left out sin and God's justice, you know. But Paul didn't. To deny the finished work is the cross. It's not just to lose your life, but your very soul. Amen. Your very soul, you know. Friends, has the cross lost its power? Has the cross lost its power? In the words of Ian Paisley, never. Amen. Never. Praise the Lord. Because when you have an encounter with the cross, you have an, you're confronted with the Christ on the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ. Praise his name. Time stops to make way for that one was eternal. Praise his name. It was so dark with Christ suffering on the cross, but the brightness of his glory penetrated not just the hordes of hell, but the people, the, but mankind. No wonder the Apostle Paul is being focused with Christ and the cross. He made his business never lose sight of the Christ and the cross. He said in First Corinthians, I determined not to know anything among you, see of Jesus Christ and how he's crucified. Hallelujah. Paul was determined to let Christ be at the centre of all the years and all the years was for Christ. And said, I'm not going to glory in anything but the cross. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. You know, the cross, we actually we know the instrument of Christ's suffering and the instrument of our salvation. Hallelujah. You know, I know the old saying was that uh, they say the Jews crucified Christ. And then the turn around and said the Romans crucified Christ. But friends, it was your sin. I crucified Jesus Christ. It was your sin. I crucified Jesus Christ. He who was sinless took upon himself the sins of the world. Even at the Lord's table, you know, we examine ourselves. We remember, take each, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do you remember to me? Take a breath, the cup, the cup of New Testament, my blood is over you, drink it. You drink it, remember of him, his work on the cross, you know. And God revealed the death of his love when Christ was on the cross, I think, of the words of that wonderful song, Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I, I know that it is finished. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. The pain that Christ felt on the cross was the penalty for our sins. Hallelujah. Praise his name. You know, I showed we uh, illustration through the Bible of maybe showing this. You know, um, about a missionary going through a village. You know, and he walked by this old Dale's house. And, and, and the look at this house that was broken, it was worn. You know, he wouldn't call it a house, just a wreck. And he, he heard a voice crying out, Are you going to come in? You know, I was this old girl, she didn't look very much, you know. She said, Please come in. Do you want a cup of tea? And as the missionary walked in the old run house, it was damp, dirty, and old, you know. The lady said to him, Do you want a cup of tea? She left it up, but it looked like a really broken, dirty cup. The dirtiest cup you could ever see, you know. It looks so dirty. And the missionary thought to himself, I'm not drinking any of that. But he didn't want the offend the poor old lady. He took that broken cup, and as he began to drink it, it tastes rotten. It was disgusting. It made him feel so sick. It was to drink. You know, Jesus took our dirty, rotten, stinking cup. Amen. Amen. Take the cup, the cup of suffering. He took for us, you know, and he drank of it. It was dirty, it was rotten, it was stinking. 
he took a full of so he did, and he drank every drop. So he did. <coughs> I started putting in him, says, verse 6 says, Behold, I have inscribed on you the palm, inscribed you on the palms of my hand. You know, when Christ's hands were near to that cross, he had you, your name on the palms of his hand. You know, he had your name on the palms of his hand. And as Jesus walked before Christ, you know, we know Christ, he was beaten, he was flogged, you know. I mean, what was it, the cat of nine, nine tails, I think it was. And that was nine strips of leather with metal on them, a tore of eye flesh out of his body. That's even before he went to the cross. And, you know, many people died, died because of blood loss, but organ failure, but... But even before he got to the cross, because of that, yeah, Christ suffered that, you know. So he said, and you know, you get down here. The Old Testament, we had, we had a word this morning with Florence, it's at 53. You know, he had no majesty, beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Not from an appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. Hallelujah. A man was suffering. Familiar with pain. He's familiar with your pain this morning. You think it was pain in this world and you multiply it a hundred times, maybe more. Christ suffered the pain of the world. The pain of the world, hallelujah. Bless his holy name. And you know, yes, we've got to come to the cross. You know, but maybe you have come to the cross. You say, might not come to the cross. See, the cross is where you lay your burdens down, isn't it? The cross is where you lay your sin and your guilt. Because you're guilty before God. It was your sin and your Jesus to that cross. You know? Oh, I've been a good person. No. No. Have you ever lied? Yeah. The Bible says you send them one, you send them all. Yeah. The end of your day. But none is perfect before God. But you know something? Christ took up on the cross, and I laid that down again, because I felt that I'd forgotten the Christ I was on the cross. You know, if you're backslidden, or if you're maybe if you were far off, God wants you to come back to the cross. God wants you, you know. And you know, friends, once you come to the cross, the next thing you got to do is take up your cross. That's the next part. You know, maybe you've come to the cross, but you haven't taken up your cross. Matthew 4, 24. If any man will come after you, then deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Maybe you haven't taken your cross. You know, many a person has come to Christ for the wrong reasons. I don't believe in decisions for Jesus. I believe in conversion. A man is born again. You know, when I... Over 30 years ago, <laughs> you know, I sat in that corner and Romans 6 was 23. You know, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. That's the verse the Lord spoke to. And I was convicted of my sin. And I was like, God turned the whole meeting down. And I was out of disrupt. I mean, and that conviction. I knew before holy God that I was a sinner and without Christ I was going to a lost eternity. And I give my life to Christ, you know. I give my life to Christ and I laid my burdens to, down there. My mum and boy said, I was just a phase you're going through. It was lasted over 30 years. You know. See, he's, he can see it from the guttermost to the uttermost. Praise his wonderful name. But friends, there's got to come a time. You've got, you've got to take up your cross. We forget about it. The Christian life is not all, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Christian life is hard because you're going against the grain of what the society says you should be. Yeah. You're going against, you might even lose friends because your friends may say, oh, you're turned away from them holy rules. You know, oh, you're, you're, you're good living. It's not good living. It's not good to live much. The Bible says there's none righteous. Romans 3, 23. All sins have fallen short of the glory of God. So there's none. You know, 
I can say that they are righteous before God in that sense of own. Jesus only. So there comes a time we've got to take up our cross, you know. Take up, and that, what that means? Well, I said before, William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, was asked the secret. Now you were Salvation Army. You know, the secret is ministry. He put it on the one word, surrender. Surrender. You know, I know the Protestants say no surrender. But you know, I surrender all. You can't, number one, you can't take up your cross unless first you come to the cross. Amen. Number two, to take up that cross, you must surrender. Amen. You must surrender. And friends, if you forget anything I've said, if it's a thing you haven't surrendered, you know. <coughs> it's like old Galatians. The want to hold on to things. You know, Jesus plus, you know. You, know, you can't live your life the way you used to live it when you give your life to Christ. The Bible says you're a new creation. And old things passed away. You know, new things has come. You know, your life's not your own anymore. You were bought with a place. Amen. So God, but God can take your life up. And he can use it. The, you know, the nobodies can become somebody's in the hand of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He can take you. Have you took up a cross? Hallelujah. You know, and that cross is a daily, it's a daily thing because at the end of the day, you will be persecuted, you will be mocked for your faith. But you know, when you see the beauty of the cross, there's nothing to compare. Paul said, with the glory of Christ. You know, with the glory of Christ. And maybe God wants to break things that were holding you back. Maybe God saying, yes, yeah, maybe years ago, yes, Lord, I've been going on good like myself. You know, and you through that time of, of doubt, you through that time where you feel, Lord, I don't feel as able anymore. The Lord said this morning, my grace is sufficient. Yeah. You know, and he wants you to take up that cross. There's one to you, God wants you to take up that cross. You know, the Calvary road wasn't an easy road. Jesus, who was it said that had to carry Christ cross for him? Joseph of Amavia, you know. Because that cross wasn't easy to carry. And you know, our cross will be not easy to carry, but it will be worth it. Amen. It will be compared to the, this world, it is nothing compared to the glory of Jesus Christ. And I want to challenge you to surrender this morning. Maybe there's something you need to surrender. Maybe you've got a grievance towards somebody. You know? Or you've been hurt. You know, the majority of people that don't go on with the Lord have been hurt at some stage. God wants to heal the hurt. Amen. And once he heals that, it's easier to forgive. You know, it's easier to forgive. You know, I knew a woman years ago that she, you could say she hated this man. You don't mention that man's name in her midst. You don't, because I, I, I mean, what came out of her if you mentioned that man's name? And that. But it, got, it consumed her so much, right? As she gets down before God and said, God, take us away. I don't want that. It's consuming me so much. Not what it does. It consumes you. It takes control. You know? I mean, you, you don't give the enemy a foothold because it becomes a stronghold. You know? Anyway, she gave it to the Lord. And you know, God took that hatred and bitterness away. And you know something? When you mentioned that man's name, she had nothing good but to say to him. About him. You know, you mentioned his name, she sang. You know, uh, you couldn't do enough for her. Her whole radiance had changed because she had took up her cross. She had sur surrendered. To the Lord and said, Lord, I'm not going to do it my way anymore. I'm going to do it your way. And that's our struggle, isn't it? That's our struggle. Paul said, I always do what I don't want to do, and that would I want to do. But, you know, there's always that struggle. We wrestle, you know. 
But we submit to the Lord. That's what the Lord is talking about here this morning. Because God's going to move. God's going to move. And his friends, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how he's going to move. But I'll tell you this. I know in whom I believe. Yeah. And we know Christ. You have total faith. What he does is right. Yeah. And we want to move with him. You know? The people say to me, the devil's doing this and the devil's doing that. They don't want to know. I want to know what Christ is doing. Yeah. He has the words of eternal life. You know? And maybe God's challenging you to break the past this morning. You know? Maybe the past was holding you back of what it used to be, what has been. Yes, it's good to look back and rejoice, but the Bible says you got to look forward. Yeah. Press on. Paul said, I press on towards the mark, the high calling. You know? And look, God's going to move, not just in this church, but in his church. Yes. Not just denomination over here. Yeah. His church. God wants. Are you willing this morning? Are you willing to say, here am I, holy available, as for me I will serve it. Are you willing, not just possession, but possession this morning, possessing Christ and all he is. Will you do it for him this morning? You know, don't do it because I preach it. Do it because you want to do it. You want to serve it. So I'm going to challenge you this morning. You know, I'm going to ask the praise group to come up and sing a song. And if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, say, Lord, I want to take up this cross, you know. Or you want to just say, Lord, I'm going to let go of those things that's holding me back. Maybe you're not in that place. God, God sees the God of restoration. He wants to restore you this morning. Or maybe you just need a healing touch for your body. Amen. Just, just stand in God's prayer.
have been faithful All my life you have been so, so 